White balance in Adobe Camera Raw is all about making sure that the whites in the image appear truly white, regardless of the lighting conditions when the photo was shot. If the whites aren't white, then all the other colours are not right either. So why does this image have such a strong magenta cast? After all, it was shot with a modern, state-of-the-art camera. Well, it's all due to the light. It was a stormy day. In fact, we can see in the background that it's pouring with rain. So the light that's illuminating the subject is coming through storm clouds and also falling rain. And that is more than enough to create what we can see here. Now, with regard white balance, we can think of that as one of those corrective editing steps we need to use to remove any color bias in the image, but that doesn't prevent us from making creative changes as well. Maybe making the image cooler or warmer using the temperature slider. Now, as we look at the color options, we can see that under the heading of white balance, we've got a number of presets here. I have to say that I don't find these very useful because in practice what I've discovered is by the time I go down this list and I try one or two of them, I could have very quickly picked up this white balance tool here. Once we've got the eyedropper, what we're looking for is a neutral color, a color that should be either white or maybe a neutral gray we could pick a colour in the tree there. Let's click and see what we get. A pretty good result. Now, if I undo that by hitting Control Z, if you look over at the temperature and tint, you can see it made quite a change. But I could click into the white areas on the muzzle of the kangaroo and we get a pretty good effect there. Every time I click, I'm going to get something different, and we can use that as it stands, or we can then add a little bit of creativity, because if I wanted to warm the image up a little bit, then I've got the freedom to do that if I wish. Let's look at this image, and I'll select that white balance eyedropper tool. Because what we should be looking for here is any areas of the image that should be white, exactly the same as the kangaroo shot. Here that's pretty obvious. Any of the water in the middle distance, the waves rolling over in the middle there, or any of the white water here. Let me just click on one area, and that's done a remarkable job. Once again, look over at the temperature and tint as I hit Control Z, and you can see they've been moved considerably. If you find you're working on an image where there's nothing which is obviously white, then maybe you'd need to zoom in a little bit, but if we look at the rocks in the foreground there, some of them appear to have a bit of green. So if I chose a part of the rock here which I expect to be neutral, I'll click on that. Let me hit Control Zero. And there you can see, again, we've got a pretty good result. The one thing we need to avoid is clicking on any light areas where there's no pixels available. Any areas, perhaps like a burnt out sky, where there's no pixels to be able to read the color temperature. But apart from that, it's pretty foolproof. There will be times when we click on the wrong thing, but it doesn't matter because we can just go down and click again. We can click around a number of times and we can start from that particular point. Remembering, of course, we've got the opportunity then to make other adjustments to the color if we feel they're appropriate. Now, here's the image that I finally settled on, opened up into Photoshop. The global editing has been done and then strategic editing, of course, but with attention on the color. My camera, by the way, is always set to auto white balance because as you've just seen, correcting white balance is quick and easy. Now here we have a slightly different problem because in this shot, I had an out of focus evergreen hedge in the background 
and it's nicely soft but it looks like I've oversaturated it but if you look over to the color sliders you can see no color has been added. Now if I drop the color using either vibrance or saturation it affects the entire image so it's not appropriate. I'll reset that. I wouldn't want to increase the temperature and make the background warmer but I may think about bringing down the temperature but of course once again it affects the entire image so we'll reset that. What we're going to turn to is our color mixer. Let's open this tab. I want to look at the mixer option. We have eight sliders here to control hue, saturation and luminance. So we've got 24 different ways to get things wrong. But here's the easy way. What's the problem here? It's saturation. So if I select the saturation and I go to this option, which is our targeted adjustment tool and click that. When I move on to the picture, I can select the color I want to affect and I can click and drag to the left just a little bit and take all of that color away. I could even switch to the luminance if I needed to and the same adjustment tool and maybe darken that if I wanted to but we start to put back a bit of color there but it's still not as bad as it was and of course we can go back to the saturation and redo these as many times as we wish. Now let's take a look at this image and once again I've gone to the color mixer because what I'd like to do is to put a bit more emphasis on the orange boat at the top. I'm going to switch to point color. When we switch to this we get another eyedropper tool, a sample point color it says. So I can click and you can see the sliders that open up on the right hand side. So here I not only get the opportunity to change the hue within some limitations, the important thing I want is saturation, but we also get luminance as well, light or dark. So I can just put a bit more input emphasis on the redness of that boat without touching any other color. Now, having done that, I may turn my attention to the boat in the foreground. Wouldn't it be nice if the blue here was a little bit stronger? Well, let's pick up the eyedropper and we'll click into that space. But of course, if we change the saturation or the hue or anything here, of course, we affect the water as well. So we've got a bit of a problem here. But what we would do in this situation, of course, is we would turn to our masks. If I go to my masks, top right, and what I'm going to select here is my objects. When I select an object, I can just paint over this area, and I don't have to be too careful with it because I'm telling the software please select that for me and it's done a pretty good job. Now I can use just the general color settings couldn't I? I could make it bluer by just dropping it down there. I could drop the exposure too. So there's always a way using the color controls whether we're going to be using them directly from the color options or we're going to be using the color here via point color or just the hue, saturation and luminance. Now the one thing we mustn't forget here is we're working within a mask. So if you want to go back to the overall image, we can do that at the top right. And there we can see the point color and the mixer. There is another color option available called color grading where we can split colors between shadows, highlights and midtones. This isn't an option that I've ever felt the need to use but Photoshop's strength is that it gives us a number of different ways to tackle our editing needs. It certainly does with regard to color. Until the next time.